Daily Minutes nummer 1431 met een uitzending voor vandaag 6 oktober 2018, dus het bulletin van zaterdag. Inderdaad, het heet weer de Daily Minutes zonder het extra. Er komen ook weer uitzendingen onder de naam Daily Minutes Extra Bits. The second part of this broadcast will be in English. In het weekend is de Daily Minutes altijd in het Engels. Op zaterdag heb ik traditioneel altijd het bulletin van RSTB. Ik maakte van die uitzending van tussen de 15 en de 20 minuten meestal een versie van 10 tot 11 minuten door de typisch Britse onderwerpen niet te gebruiken. Sinds ik geen muziek meer mocht uitzenden gebruikte ik de minder gelikte versie van dat bulletin en niet meer de TX Factor die veel professioneler klinkt maar die wel wat muziekjes aan boord heeft. Met ingang van deze week kan ik weer die beter gepresenteerde versie nemen. Die moet, dan moet nog wel blijken dat die op tijd beschikbaar is. Maar ik zal daar voorlopig niet meer in knippen bij de RCB. Je krijgt een volledige versie. Uh, ik weet niet zeker of die versie dus altijd op tijd op zaterdag al beschikbaar zal zijn. Uh, in het verleden was dat meestal later. Om die, reden, om die reden wissel ik vanaf dit weekend de beide dagen om. Vandaag het bulletin van de ERL en de column van Onno uit Australië. En dan morgen de RCB indien beschikbaar in de versie van die X-Factor. En anders de gebruikelijke maar dan ongeknipt. Ja, zoals ik zei vandaag dus ERRL Audio News en daarna Onno Benschop, VK6 FLAB. Ik heb vandaag nog een extraatje, nou ja, uh, iets extra. Het is een interview van een paar jaar geleden door QSO Today van David Fries. David Fries is W1HKJ, die call die zegt hij waarschijnlijk meer. Hij is de maker van het programma FL Digi. Dat interview dat duurt 50 minuten, dus dat is een lange uitzending vandaag. Om die reden wordt de uitzending vandaag opgesplitst in twee delen. Een deel uh, Daily Minutes en een tweede deel onder de naam Daily Minutes Extra Bits met het interview. Nou ja, dat vergat ik nog. Deze uitzending bestaat uit twee delen. Hij is in stereo en bevat als je via YouTube kijkt... één minuut video in het Engels met een celebrity zendamateur. Vandaag is er geen data. In the beginning, there was silence. Then came ham radio. And there came the great exchange of ideas... that led to many new inventions like the cell phone... and communications that leads to lifelong friendships... from down the street to around the world... with millions of other amateur radio operators. And today's ham radio is the best source of backup communications... during disasters or emergencies. Ham radio is alive and well. Find out more and get in on all the action. How you doing? Joe Walsh here, WB6ACU. I've been a ham since 1960... Ham radio has given me friends all over the world who I never would have met otherwise, and it's taught me skills and electronics that have helped me in my career. I give back to amateur radio by being a member of ARRL. Thanks to its members, the league provides support for on-the-air events that give ham so much enjoyment. ARRL is the National Association for Amateur Radio. They are our voice in Washington and all around the world. Be a member. Please join ARRL. Find more out about it at ARRL.org. Slash join! See you on the air. This is ARRL Audio News, your weekly summary of news highlights from the world of amateur radio. If you retransmit audio news through a repeater, listen for the Morris Code K character, followed by four seconds of silence. That's your signal to stop transmitting so that your repeater timer can reset. I'm Carla Pereira, KC1HSX, and these are our stories for Friday, October 5th. ARRL has taken a minor exception to the wording of a September 24th FCC enforcement advisory pertaining to the importation, marketing, and sale of VHF and UHF transceivers and is in discussion with FCC personnel to resolve the matter. The enforcement advisory was in response to the importation into the U.S. of certain radio products that are not FCC certified for use in any radio service, but identified as amateur radio equipment. In a statement, ARRL said, quote, While much of this equipment is actually usable on amateur bands, the radios are also capable of operation on non-amateur frequencies allocated to radio services that require the use of equipment that has been FCC certified. Such equipment is being marketed principally to the general public via mass e-marketers and not to amateur radio licensees, unquote. 
The upshot is that the general public has been purchasing these radios in large quantities, and they are being used on the air by unlicensed individuals. Radio amateurs have complained of increased unlicensed use of amateur allocations by people who are clearly unlicensed and unfamiliar with amateur radio operating protocols. But while ARRL supports the general tenor and intent of the enforcement advisory, we disagree with the FCC on one point. In several places, the enforcement advisory makes the point that anyone importing, advertising, or selling such non-compliant devices should stop immediately, and anyone owning such devices should not use them. The advisory broadly prohibits the use of such radios, but our view is that there is no such prohibition relative to licensed amateur radio use, entirely within amateur radio allocations, of a radio that may be capable of operation in non-amateur spectrum, as long long as it is not actually used to transmit in non-amateur spectrum. It is important to protect the flexibility of the amateur service as essentially an experimental radio service, but it is also very important to stop the unlawful importation and marketing of illegal radios in the United States and the use of those radios by unlicensed persons. ARRL has had extensive discussions about this issue with FCC Wireless Bureau and Enforcement Bureau staff, and those discussions are ongoing. The ARRL website will update its security software on Monday, October 15th to meet standards required to continue accepting credit cards for Internet purchases. For the vast majority of our members, there will be no impact other than a guarantee of better security when logging into and making purchases on the ARRL website, said ARRL Headquarters IT Department Manager Mike Keen, K1MK. Only those using old browsers or outdated operating systems will encounter a browser error message when trying to log in or make a purchase on the website. These browsers are among those that are safe to continue using. Google Chrome 30 or higher. Mozilla Firefox 27 or higher. Microsoft Internet Explorer 11 or higher. Apple Safari 7 or higher. Safari 5 or higher on mobile. Microsoft Edge. Opera 17. The vast majority of our website users will not have to take any action. Most modern browsers and operating systems will not be affected by the change as they already support the new security standards. If you are affected, go to your browser vendor's website and download an up-to-date version of your browser. ARRL is making this change to ensure that it is adhering to best industry practices, thereby providing website visitors with a higher level of security for their browsing sessions. Following a devastating 7.7 magnitude earthquake and tsunami in central Sulawesi, Indonesia on September 28th, members of International Amateur Radio Union Member Society Organisasi Amateur Radio Indonesia and other volunteers have been providing emergency communication for community and government interests. The quake and tsunami destroyed the city of Palu, completely cutting power and telephone connections, as well as the cellular communication infrastructure. Amateur radio operators in Indonesia immediately responded to the unfolding disaster, establishing an emergency net on 7.110 MHz. Amateur radio volunteers from other regions also pitched in to support radio communication for emergency news on 7.110 MHz and 7.065 MHz. Amateur radio also has assisted government agencies following severe damage to the telecommunication infrastructure. Hams operating on two meters were communicating information on which roads were open to allow traffic from the outside. The earthquake and subsequent tsunami has claimed upward of 900 lives and caused widespread devastation. Some victims have been reported to be trapped in the debris. The Indonesian National Disaster Mitigation Agency has told news media that, in addition to communication, heavy equipment for rescue operations is limited. Military Auxiliary Radio System, or MARS, will support a Department of Defense HF radio communication exercise October 24th through the 26th. The readiness exercise will test the ability to communicate via voice and military standard communication protocols, simulating the loss of conventional communication systems. 
Amateur radio operators are asked to monitor 60 meter channel 1, 5330.5 kHz USB at 01 UTC on October 24th for a high power broadcast of updated information regarding this exercise and how the amateur radio community can participate. During the exercise, Mars members will communicate with amateur radio operators on all five 60 meter channels as well as on other amateur radio bands. The Radio Club of America has named well-known academic, entrepreneur, contester, and DXer Theodore Rappaport, N9NB, as the recipient of the 2018 Armstrong Medal. The Armstrong Medal is the club's most prestigious honor. Rappaport is being honored for outstanding achievements and lasting contributions to the radio arts and sciences and wireless communications. Inventor and entrepreneur Nathan Cohen, W1YW, of Fractal Antenna and Cloaking Technology fame, will receive the club's Lee DeForest Award for significant contributions to the advancement of radio communications. Radio amateurs are among the recipients of several other 2018 Radio Club of America awards. Joseph Yerman, N2PFO, received the Fred M. Link Award for notable achievements in land mobile radio communications. Mark Allen, W6PC, was the recipient of the Edgar F. Johnson Pioneer Citation in recognition for noteworthy contributions to the success of RCA or the radio industry. And Carol Hollingsworth, K5CTT, received the RCA President's Award for service and dedication to the Radio Club of America. Researchers at Drexel University's College of Engineering report a breakthrough in nanomaterials technology that promises to make installing an antenna as easy as applying sunblock or bug spray. The invisible spray-on antennas are made from a type of two-dimensional metallic material called mexine, a conductive two-dimensional titanium carbide material, which can be dissolved in water to create an ink or paint. They said the exceptional conductivity of the material enables it to be employed as an RF radiator even when applied in a very thin, nearly invisible coating. The Mexine antennas perform as well as those now being used in mobile devices, wireless routers, and other devices. And now with this week's satellite update, here's Bruce Page, KK5DO. If you happen to be one of those APRS users, do not forget that we have a couple amateur satellites that you can use to report your position. The good thing about having a satellite for APRS is that you can usually use a 5 watt HT that has APRS built in or a computer hooked to the HT to send your report to the satellite. They are not there all the time, however. If you grab the Kepelarian elements and use a tracking program, this can be very useful while you are hiking on a mountain or using motorbikes and dune buggies in the desert. You use the normal 145.825 MHz 1200 baud APRS frequency. This is an especially useful mode on NO44 and NO84 when you have no repeater available. For those digital gurus out there, there's a satellite for you as well. FalconSat 3 that uses 145.840 MHz up and 435.103 MHz down. However, this is not an FM mode satellite. It is 9600 BPS GMSK. This makes it a bit more interesting as you have to have a computer to encode and decode your signal. Software for this mode may be found on the AMSAT.org website under Satellite Info and Communication Satellites, then click on FalconSat 3. As I've mentioned in the past, when it comes to satellites, there's a mode that will interest almost everyone. How about D-Star on a satellite? There is one on the other side of the Earth, and hopefully we will have one on our side one day. Technology is ever-changing, and AMSAT is doing their part in developing new satellite technology. This is Bruce Page, KK5DO, for the ARRL Audio News. I'm Steve Ford, WB8IMY, and this is the ARRL Audio News Propagation Forecast for Friday, October 5th. We finally had a sunspot, but it wasn't much to speak of. In fact, it will likely be gone by the time you hear this. 
As a result, the solar flux index didn't see a boost, and it's still hovering around 67. So expect the bands above 40 meters to be mediocre at best in the week to come. We have a blast of solar particles headed our way, and they're due to arrive around October 7th or 8th. The impact on the HF bands is difficult to predict, but we'll likely notice some disruptions, and a few of these could be serious. On VHF and UHF, weather fronts are still causing moderate tropo openings, primarily in the central U.S., and this is expected to continue for several days. California is also seeing significant activity, primarily in the northern parts of the state. And that concludes ARRL Audio News for this week. Our thanks to all contributors to this week's report. ARRL Audio News is produced by the American Radio Relay League, the National Association for Amateur Radio. For more information on amateur radio or the ARRL, visit us on the web at ARRL.org. You can also find us on Facebook and Twitter by searching for ARRL. If you have a question or comment about ARRL Audio News, email us at audio news news at ARRL.org. This program is copyright ARRL, all rights reserved. 73, and thanks for listening. I'm Ono of the Foundations of Amateur Radio podcast in Australia, and you're listening to the Daily Minutes by Papa Alpha Zero, Echo Tango Echo. Foundations of Amateur Radio. One topic that is longer than all other topics combined is that of antennas. Designing, planning, sourcing, building, tuning, using, you name it. All of this is regular fare in the day of a radio amateur. I've discussed the topic here regularly, and no doubt I'll revisit that when the mood or necessity takes me. One topic that is rarely discussed is that of failure. About six months ago, I moved house. I've been rebuilding my shack, doing all manner of fancy shuffling of gear, and yesterday I finally got to the point of getting some HF activity happening. During that process, I went through boxes and boxes of stuff, with coax, connectors, wire, nuts, bolts, heat shrink, and all the other necessities of being a member of an experimental hobby like ours. One box contained wire. You know the adage, only two types of wire required in our hobby, Cheap wire or free wire with a preference for free? This box was stuffed with wire. Bits with connectors, bits wound around spools, bits in Ziploc bags with labels, bits of random length. Lots of bits of random length. There was even an abortive attempt at labelling dipoles for various bands on the outside of a couple of Ziploc bags. But no idea if the bit of wire in the bag was actually ever tested and resonant on whatever band was on the label. So who knows, they might have just been cut long waiting for another day and another set of experiments and measurements. I needed around 50 metres of hookup wire for my HF antenna experiment and it occurred to me when I was hunting through my box that I couldn't look at a spool and tell you how much wire there was. I did a dodgy measurement of one bit, put it on the kitchen scales and determined that another spool was heavier, so it was likely longer, But without bringing in my calculator, doing extra measurements and doing some head scratching, there was no way I was going to get to the point of knowing how much actual wire was on that spool. In the end, I made do with the dodgy piece, soldered some joins. That's a whole other adventure involving a gas-powered soldering iron and a flame, the Flame 1, as well as several other breaks and fixes. While I was in the process of putting up my new antenna experiment, it occurred to me that part of the process of experimentation even of shack maintenance, should be the documentation stage. I have bits of terminated coax, some of it 20 metres long, some longer, some shorter. How much longer? And how much shorter, you ask? No idea. But wouldn't it be great if I could put my hands on a piece of kit that I needed that was the length that I expected, and not 10 metres over length or 1 metre short? In my audio kit, I have started labelling patch leads with their functions, using key ring tags, I don't expect that to work for plain wire, but it should be a good solution for coax. I could use cable tie labels, but past experience with those leaves the text fading on the label. I've experimented with a printed label with clear heat shrink, but for reasons best known to chemists, the clear heat shrink becomes yellow in short order, leaving the label unreadable. I've heard of people using electrical tape with colour coding, perhaps one ring for every five metres of length but they seem to come undone in the dust when you go camping. One thing I do know is that this is a recurring problem for me. 
This is the first time I've actually stopped to talk about it, and perhaps it means that I'll get a little closer to a solution. I'd love to hear what you do to deal with this and how you keep track of the countless different lengths of wire, coax and rope that's lying around your shack. I'm Ono, Victor Kilo 6, Foxtrot, Lima, Alpha, Bravo. Amateur radio, often called ham radio, is really many hobbies and passions under one name. From studying the stars, to creating new computer applications, to practicing their emergency communications skills every June on field day weekend, hams enjoy serving the community in many ways. Daily Minutes zijn dagelijks vanaf ongeveer 1900 uur te beluisteren. De uitzending wordt een dag later om half elf ochtends herhaald. Alle mail is welkom op het adres x, xdvme Dat is ook te vinden rechts boven aan de webpagina van de uitzending in www.pa0ete.nl. De Daily Minutes toont iedere dag weer aan de hand van schokkende voorbeelden hoe een hobby mensenlevens kan veranderen. Ik ben na de uitzending van 7 uur s'avonds weer QFV op Echolink via PI3XTV. PI3XTV min R is dat op Echolink, nodenummer 979350. En daarnaast op de beide chats. De internetfaciliteiten en studio hardware voor Daily Minutes worden gesponsord door 70 megahertzshop.nl. 70 mhzshop.nl. En microfoon naar retour.